there, thank you for watching my channel today. My name's Sarah and this is Your True Shelf. And today I'm going to do a video about the books on Goodreads which have got the lowest number of ratings. So I just sorted all of the books that I have to read on my TBR by um, number of ratings and I picked the ones which needed a little bit of a shout out because not enough people have read them. There may be a reason for that or it may just be that nobody's heard of them or it's been ages since they came out. Um, so, without further ado, here is the 10 books on my TBR which have had the least number of people rate them on Goodreads. The first one is a book which I feel a little bit like I want to hide it on my bookshelves, which is really stupid because um, I shouldn't be embarrassed by anything on my shelves really. And I must have bought it about 15 years ago and haven't read it yet. And it is... Um, Riley by Catherine Kixon. Now the reason I bought this was because when I was a child I used to spend a lot of time doing stuff in my bedroom whilst listening to audiobooks on tape and um, we used to get them from the library me and my mum and we absolutely loved the Catherine Kixon tapes and um, so I have only got this and a trilogy by her um, but I bought this kind of for old times sake I guess. Um, I don't even know what it's about. Um, so it's about a man called Riley who uh, says he had a harsh childhood. He left school with little in the way of knowledge, but he was very optimistic and one of his teachers had faith in him. Um, and it says neither of them could have envisaged the influence the other was to have on the course of their lives. Um, they tend to be, they're all set normally in the north of England, um, near Newcastle. They tend to feature themes of class and poverty and wealth and they tend to be like, books where tragic things happen quite a lot um, but I should get around to reading it because I've had it for so long and haven't read it yet. The next one, when I just picked it up off my shelf, I wasn't actually sure how I got it and then I found this really cute little piece of paper inside with my granddad's handwriting on it so I know that this was one of his books. So now I feel a bit bad that I didn't know that I got it from him and I should get around to reading it sooner. Um, and that is a book called To War with Whitaker, The Wartime Diaries of the Countess of Ranfurly, 1939-45. to This actually sounds really good. I just read the back of it probably for the first time. It's, um, so it's, it's a true story. It's the actual diaries. It says, um, When World War II broke out, Dan Ranfurly was dispatched to the Middle East with his faithful valet, Whitaker. These are the diaries of his young wife, Hermione, who, defying the war office, raced off in hot pursuit of her husband. When Dan was taken prisoner, Hermione vowed to never return home until they were reunited. For six years, travelling alone from Cape Town to Palestine and meeting such charismatic characters as Churchill, Eisenhower and a parrot called Coco on the way, she kept her promise. So I bet that's really, really interesting. So I'll have to try and push that up my pile of stuff to read. Third, we have a book. Again, I think I got this from a charity shop quite a long time ago. Um, and it is it is one that was shortlisted for the Costa First Novel Award in 2008 um, and on um, Richard and Judy and that is Inside the Whale by Jenny Rooney. This is another wartime book um, so it says Stevie Stanford, recently widowed, must tell her family the truth but the past is complicated and difficult to untangle. Meanwhile Michael's memories are squashed into a shoebox along with Queen Matilda's Dickin Medal for Bravery for Pigeons ready for his move to hospital. Michael has never been good at putting things into words. He's more comfortable with a click of Morse code. But Anna, a young healthcare assistant, has the patience and rare tenderness to coax out his story. And so he begins. Hmm. Well, I had no idea what that was about because I can't even, I couldn't even remember. So, sounds quite good. The next one is one I think I've mentioned, I have mentioned this before. Um, it's by an author who I've read other things by, but not this one, and that is um, All Things Censored by Mamiya Abu Jamal. So uh, Mamiya, Mamiya Abu Jamal is serving life without parole in America. He was on death row, and after many court trials and appeals, he got his sentence changed to life without parole. Um, he was arrested with extremely poor evidence and had a very biased trial. And he has um, been writing books from prison. And these are a collection of essays by him. And this is um, 79 writings that he composed from prison 
I said he writes on topics including the ironies that abound within the US prison system, the consequences of those ironies for us all and his own case. And it comes with a CD of 36 um, of his... Um, 36 of his radio commentaries and also um, other writers and activists on the CD. So, um, yeah, again, I've had this for quite a long time, but I'm looking forward to reading it. The next one is one that I um, heard the author interviewed by Oprah and it appealed to me, so I picked it up again ages and ages ago. I think this is a second-hand copy. Um, this is called The History of Last Night's Dream, The Hidden Path to the Soul by Roger Kamenetz. And it's basically a book about um, our dreams and the meaning of our dreams and how we can interpret them to um, try and understand the messages that are within the dreams. The next one is um, a book that I was sent, and uh, not since doing BookTube, but um, I was sent this by... When I, start again. I was going to be doing a magazine for um, the area where I work and I got sent this as a review copy and the magazine then folded so I never got to do the, re the review. Um, this book has one rating on Goodreads, it's, my, it's the one with the fewest and it is called Stories from a Country Practice by Dr Neville Silverstone and um, so he graduated from Manchester in 1954 and he was running a single-handed rural practice in a place called Bottersham on call 24 hours a day um, and he basically um, he developed a pocket pager, the first in the UK and then he set up um, a place where a control room manned by nurses for if he was needed in an emergency and then set up the Mid Anglia GP Accident Service in 1971 to help with road accidents and then he was awarded an MBE. So, um, sounds like somebody that I really should know about because um, it sounds like he did a lot of good work and this is a really small book um, of amusing anecdotes with some illustrations um, which was published in 2007. Uh, next is a book that I picked up in a charity shop um, I when I was trying to look for books that would bring me comfort and I read another book by this author and found it really um, really kind of like heartwarming so I picked this one up and that is called um, Meet Me Under the Clock Tower by Annie Murray. So um, growing up in Birmingham, sisters Sylvia and Audrey Whitehouse were always like chalk and cheese. When the Second World War breaks out, Sylvia is still dreaming of her forthcoming marriage to fiancé Ian, while Audrey jumps at the career opportunities offered by the WAF. Audrey joins the ranks of the RAF, Cardington, uh, but she finds that her new freedom also brings temptation. When she goes too far one night, the consequences ripple through the White House family. Meanwhile, Sylvia is doing her bit as a railway porter, much to Ian's dismay. He thinks the job isn't very feminine, unlike Sylvia's new friend Kitty, who is as sweet and pretty as can be but Kitty's innocent nature hard, hides a dark secret. As the pressure of rationing, bombing raids and sleepless nights grow, the two sisters must decide what they really want from life and whether they're brave enough to fight for it. So, um, another wartime one. These are like, that's my third wartime one so far. Obviously not that popular. <laughs> um, okay, so three more to go. Um, the next one is a sequel and um, the first one was called The Horse Boy by Rupert Isaacson and it's non-fiction and the sec this is the sequel called The Long Ride Home. So um, this is uh, this is the book here. So um, this is Rowan on the front cover who has autism and um, he went on a horseback mission to Mongolia with his family where they tried to help his autism by um, meeting with Mongolian shamans so it was super interesting and I listened to the audio of the first one and the, his dad Rupert Isaacson um, narrated the audio and this is the sequel because um, he had a really good improvement in his uh, autistic behaviour after he went on this trip and then it says a year later he started going back to how he was before and so um, this time they went to the Bushmen of Namibia and Australia's 
coastal rainforests and finally America's Navajo Reservation. So that sounds really interesting and I am really looking forward to this. I bought this for my mum and um, I've just borrowed it off her and haven't given it back. So the penultimate one is one that I mentioned recently because this was one of the Costa Prize First Novel Award list and I won it and this is um, Pieces of Me by Natalie Hartz which is about two uh, soldiers, one male, one female and about their PTSD of the man after he is deployed and the, how this affects their relationship. So that's another war one. <laughs> And then the final one that I have, which um, this was a really lovely present that my dear friend Nicola sent for me as a surprise. And um, I haven't read it yet, but I will do soon. Um, this is again non-fiction. And um, this is After You by Natasha McElhoun. Um, she is a beautiful British actress who played um, the main female lead in the US drama or comedy drama um californication that's how i came across her and um i really like her as an actress and a person and she had she was away in los angeles she had two little boys and she was pregnant with her third child and she and then she got the news that her husband had literally dropped down dead from a heart attack and I think he was like, literally as he was letting himself into the house, I think he just had a heart attack and I'm pretty sure that he was a doctor. Um, and this is um, the letters that she wrote to him to try and help her deal with her grief. So one of the reasons I haven't read it yet is because I know it's going to be really sad and I have to be in the right frame of mind to read it. Um, but I just can't, I can't imagine like that happening, just how, how terrible, like how sad, how devastating normally but then to be like have two small children and be pregnant with your third when it happens is just um yeah just I don't know how she how she got through it to be honest so this is her letters to him so they were my 10 least rated books on Goodreads I doubt that any of you have read any of them but if you have then let me know what you thought and um let me know what you're reading at the moment I hope you're having a lovely weekend even though it'll probably be midweek by the time this goes up and I will speak to you soon. Bye.